So we've done some chipping. What about pitching, which is our bigger version, obviously, of the chipping? So exactly. Yep. So what, why is, I mean, pitching is so important, isn't it? To be able to pitch it comfortably up and onto the green. Yep. Consistently. That's what our goal is to get yep. some consistency with these and, shots. And once again, like we said, with chipping, we need to be able to get no more than three. You know, one one yeah. pitch, two putts would be, uh, yeah. would be ideal. Yeah. We your don't want four. Goal is to give yourself a chance yep. at one putt. Worst case yep. scenario is two. Putts. And depending on your handicap, so the lower exactly. your handicap, the better you exactly. would be. So. And I think, um, Annie, it's really important because people are often saying, what's the difference between chipping and pitching? That's a big question we get all the yeah. time. So I like to say when I'm pitching, I'm further away from the green and I'm actually just having a bigger swing. Mm -hmm. The only thing I change is my ball position a little bit, not a great deal. And, and the ball's going to lift up a bit and the, Yeah, because I'm having a bigger swing. Yeah. And I'm normally using I'm more loft. I'm uh, normally using my wedges or my nine iron yeah. or my sandwich. That's right. That's and right. where I'm chipping... Mm -hmm. um, um, I know some people have one club, but with chipping, I can use a variety. Yeah. So if we look at it, the, the chipping, as we just said before, is just this little swing back and through. Mm. So then as I'm going into a, um, a pitch shot, I'm going to, if we're thinking of a clock face, oh, yeah. there's the chip. I'm just going a little further back yes. and a little further yes, through. Exactly. Or I'm going, once I swing any further than this, which I call like an L. Yeah, I do too. That's it. That's the end. Uh, otherwise, it's now going to be a three-quarter swing. And yes, I always yes. want my follow-through to match up or be a little longer. Yeah, I don't want it short. back and through. Similar back yeah. and through. And I was just going to say too that this pitch shot is the same shot that you would use if you were coming up over a bunker. Absolutely. Don't think you've got to do anything fancy just because yep. you've got to go over a bunker. This is this is yep. per perfect for all of all different situations yep. where you just want to lift it up onto the ground. And I think depending on your handicap as well, I mean, basically the golf course tells us what we should do. Yep. So the golf course yep. is always yep. telling us. Yep. And sometimes we go a little bit beyond our expectations are a little yep. bit stronger than our uh, mm -hmm. ability. Yeah. So quite often, and I know you agree with this, I, I would much prefer to always have a little a swing if I can than a big, yes. big swing where more Absolutely. can go wrong. So if I can land it short, run it run up, it that's up. what I'm going to do. If there's no obstacles, if there's yeah. not a lot of grass. Yeah. Yeah, and always do what you're most confident with. Yeah. Not just because yeah. pro golf gals say to you, you've got to pitch. Yeah. You might say, no, I'd prefer but, to but do it. But don't, if the grass is very heavy, you can't don't do it. start trying to run it through no. just because you're too scared to pitch. That's yeah. why it's really good to get good at pitching. Absolutely. And then you get to choose the right shot, not the yeah. shot that you, yeah. you, you know, that you think, oh, I'm too scared yeah. to do that, so I'll do that. Yeah. So, yeah. That's 100%. why we, we want you to get you've got, you've got to You've got to learn to chip and pitch. Yeah, exactly. You've you got to learn really to get away yeah. with it. I mean, unless you don't want to ever get off the 45 handicap or something yeah. like that. Uh, and if you're playing on a golf course that's uh, a Lynx course and the fairways are cut, you mm. can probably get away with it. But Even still, then you might have to come over a bunker or yep. something. You're never going to get, you're right, your handicap's not going to drop to the level that's it should. That's right. Yeah, you can make do. But okay, so let's Let, so. To the tip. Uh, uh, from the school, you remember what we were doing is once again, I'm down the grip. So I don't change this. I like consistency. So when I was chipping, I was this far down the grip. I'm doing the same for my pitch shot. I like it down because of it gives me more control. It also tells my subconscious once again, not doing a full swing. I'm also having the same bend forward. My ball position now is a little bit more in the middle. That's about all I'm saying that's different. The chip was a little closer closer to the right foot, it's just in the middle. My weight is still ever so slightly favouring my left side. I'm doing that with my knees and my stance is open. So if I'm wanting to do a little baby pitch, I'm just swinging back. And notice when I'm coming through, I swing back, there's a little bit of wrist hinge, not a massive amount, a little bit. And as I come through, I'm nice and firm. I've still got like that Y shape happening. I've still got this. I don't want any of this happening. The reason I really love pitching is because it's like working with your full swing. So it's just this part of my full swing. So if I practice my pitching, I'm going to get better at my full swing as well. And so let me just run that through. Down the grip, same, same, everything's the same. And all I'm doing is a nice light hold, swinging back, allowing a natural amount of wrist hinge, not a huge amount, a natural amount, and through and through I go. See how I've kept the Y? And you can see that's gonna run out a long way. If I, not a long way, but it does run out. It doesn't stop instantly. Not unless you're using certain golf balls or you nip the ball totally perfect. So always expect a little bit of run out. And this is just my pitching wedge, so it'll run more than my sand wedge. So then if I'm wanting to do a bigger swing, 
it will naturally go further and all I'm going to do is swing back further same grip down it ball position and a swing back now I'm swinging back a little further into what looks like an L shape so the L is there I let it drop down and I swing through into an L shape let's have a little look at that and you can see that one because it was a bigger swing it also goes higher so the little of the swing you're not going to get as much height unless you're using a more lofted club so the more loft the less it's going to run the less distance it's going to go as well so it's very very simple just takes a little bit of practice the one thing that we like to do is it's really good if you can get good at doing a couple of those distances and just get some carry distances know how far this length swing goes know how far that length swing goes with a few of your wedges it makes playing golf so much easier so from the clinic remember part of your homework so that you can score better I want you to know and I want you to write down maybe through the, the golf clinic or when you go home, how far the ball carries when you do your left arms horizontal to the ground, you got your, your, your L shape or your wrists are hinged and you're swinging through to the same amount. How far does that carry with my pitching wedge? How far does it carry with my sand wedge? That'll be two distances you have and then go to your sand wedge, get how far it carries doing this length swing that is when the club is hor shafts horizontal to the ground you're just going here I like the clock face idea so your knuckles are pointing there and you're going through and then how far does it carry doing that so all of a sudden two clubs you've got four carry distances and they'll all run out a slightly different amount but the carry is the important because remember we're generally coming over a bunker or over some thick grass so you need to know where it's landing